After a near miss in the finals in Shanghai, the last place Hong Kong wanted to be was in the third, fourth playoff in Borneo. They registered their displeasure with a resounding win over China. Their first try included a few acrobatics before the ball finally got into the hands of Tom McQueen, who dotted down untouched after racing a final 25 metres. Unending support play was the best way to describe Hong Kong's second try. From a sloppy beginning, they were able to consolidate possession, regain the ball after an uncertain kick, and finally outlast a desperate Chinese defence before putting Kwok Pa Chun over in the corner, and Hong Kong went up 12-0. China's offensive effort finally caught up with the work they were doing on defence. A potential turnover became the first try when Han Shao Long broke free and outran Rowan Varty for the score. The conversion was successful and the score closed to 12-7. Fortune seemed to be going China's way when Wang Wei found himself surrounded by four defenders. Instead of working the ball back across the pitch, Wang chose to kick, and initially it appeared to be a mistake. A fortuitous bounce and good hands put the winger in the clear, and China was suddenly up 14-12 at the half. Hong Kong returned from the break with a determination to erase the mistakes and play a cleaner brand of rugby. Mark Goosen took a return pass from Sung Hing Hung and rumbled through a would-be tackler to score their second try of the half and extend Hong Kong's lead 22-14. They were back two minutes later with an easy-as-you-like try to Salem Yu. Three simple passes and an inside step extended Hong Kong's lead to 27-14. China began to feel the heat and mistakes ensued. An ill-advised attempt at a pass wound up in the hands of Alex McQueen and a timely pop to Mark Goosen rounded out the scoring as Hong Kong won it handedly 34-14. Malaysian state of Sabah, known as the land below the wind, provided the backdrop as the women's final got underway at the Likas Stadium. Just as they'd done in Shanghai, the Chinese women came into the final having won each of their tournament matches. Papua New Guinea's only loss came against China in a 12-10 affair that was decided by a conversion. But PNG's Joanne Lagona was hoping to change all that, and her early try put them up 5-0. PNG was hoping to come out and control the ball, which they were able to do successfully. Their patience was rewarded when Catherine Rembu spotted space down the weak side and with speed to burn helped stake PNG to a 12-0 lead. Once Rembu turned the corner, there was no stopping her. China was struggling to find any room forward as the PNG defence came up consistently flat and missed few tackles. Zheng Pui finally found space on the outside and when she was brought down 5 metres from the line, the referee awarded a penalty for the high tackle. An alert Sun Shih Chao took the quick tap and dotted down for the last points of the half, PNG 12, China 5. Sun's quick decision caught the PNG defence out and the try was inevitable. Early in the second half, Lagona went back to work. A bit of razzle-dazzle on the outside caught China's defence by surprise. She followed that up with a strong inside move to elude Quan Chi 
and coasted in for the try of the tournament. It's uncertain whether Laguna really needed to cut back in as she appeared to have Huang beaten. But the move capped off an amazing try and put PNG in front 19-5. Two minutes later, Laguna was in again. This time she pinned her ears back and darted straight for the line. Sun looked like she'd had the angle, but Laguna was too strong and dotted down for her third try of the match. China kept up the fight and one minute from time got their second try of the match when Dong Yu split the PNG defence and sprinted 45 metres before smartly dishing inside. Teammate Young Min was there to scoop up the ball and go the final 5 metres for the try, but PNG won it clearly 24-10. Two different styles, um, there's, there was the physical, physicality of the PNG girls and there was the finesse and skill of the Chinese girls. Uh, and you know, obviously, um, the better team, you know, from the bounce of the ball, won on the day. So, uh, you know, in the pool rounds, it went the other way. So, um, not much between them, but uh, a good result for for uh, Oceania, particularly, and for PNG, who runners up last year and went one better this year. So, fantastic result. In the men's final, the Philippines felt they could match up with Japan physically and came out looking to punch the ball up. Japan was happy to absorb the punishment and attack when the situation presented itself. Daiki Yanagawa got the first opportunity and last year's runners-up were first across the line. Yanagawa's stutter step froze Jack Letts to clear the way and Japan was up 5-0. The Philippine defence was ever-present throughout the first half, but Japan was unrelenting in their support play. The second breakthrough came in the fourth minute when quick ball from the breakdown created an overlap outside. It was then just a matter of hands until the ball reached Lotte de Lacau, who fended his way across the line for a 10-0 lead to Japan. The Philippines continued to press Japan, but were thwarted once again as the defence overcommitted on what looked like a turnover ball. Instead, Yanagawa broke the first line of defence and coasted to Japan's third and final try of the half. Life got no easier for the finals debutants as Japan kept up the pressure. Taiki Watanabe took the long pass in space, drew his man and made a perfect pass to So Takanaka who raced the remaining 40 metres to extend the lead to 22-0. At this point, the Philippines had played nearly the entire match without the ball and it showed. Roy Saruta scored the second of his two second half tries after Japan's big man created space with a 20 metre rumble through the Philippines defence. Captain Takayuki Yamauchi got into the action with an easy score from the quick tap penalty. And Saperi Pepper rounded out the scoring with a nice dummy to bring the final tally to 46-0. Philippine captain Jake Letts was optimistic in defeat. Obviously, yeah, disappointed with the scoreline, but a credit to Japan. They are an awesome outfit. They really, that, they proved that they are the powerhouse in Asian rugby. And with playing a team like that, you know, you can't make any errors. They went side to side. They were physical. They really gave it to us. To our boys, you know. We'll live and we'll learn. As they say, you've got to lose one to win one. So hopefully next time we'll bounce back and give it to them. But yeah, to Japan, credit to all them. They're a great side, very experienced, and they're a great result for them. Philippines are a physical team. We have a lot of speed and ball keeper. We have a lot of speed and ball keeper. So Japan wins top honours in Borneo with a convincing win over the Philippines. But it's the Philippines jumping five places to capture runners-up honours that's the surprise of the tournament. Korea and Kazakhstan were the biggest disappointments, although Korea still finishes joint third in the overall race for the Hong Kong qualification. Malaysia is on the bubble with 14 points and must wait out the final selection process before booking their trip. 
That's a wrap for the 2011 edition of the HSBC Asian 7 Series. Be sure to check us out online early 2012 for next year's dates and locations. From all of us here at the Asian Rugby Football Union, thanks for tuning in. We look forward to seeing you next year.